Hello and welcome back to another video from the fanpub.com. I've got Sean with me. I've just again. come down from upstairs, thanks, Alan. Yeah, yeah, nice sleep. Yeah, yeah, lovely sleep, thank you very much. <laughs> just come, rolled out for this deep sleeper video. Cheers for that. I'm uh, oh, sorry you didn't have a bed or anything, so you had to sleep downstairs, didn't you? No, I'm sleeping rough outside now. Oh, I, don't that, I don't know how this has all worked out, but thank you. Um, anyway, <laughs> without further ado, we're going on to our deep sleeper list. This is people of an average draft position of 150, so they're real late round flyers. Depending on how deep your league is, you, you might need them, you might not. But they're, they're good ones to keep an eye on if, you, if it is that sort They've got the potential to add value almost immediately, if not as the season unfolds. That's the key with this. Exactly. Do you want to give me your first Yeah, the, or the lowest one down on the ADP list is 151. I got as close to 150 as I could. That was Kenny Stills. I do like the value. I mean, I know that there are risks with this pick because obviously we know that obviously Tannehill's gone down. Jay Cutler's throwing the ball. But people forget Jay Cutler actually does have a decent deep ball. I think people keep forgetting this so I think Kenny Stills they're going to have to risk games and that means Kenny Stills has some value I think he's a bit of a boom or bust player but sometimes when you're up against a good fantasy team you do have to roll the dice and think I'll take the player with the biggest upside and, and that might be a Kenny Stills I, I like Kenny Stills but like you say yeah, it's a bit boom or bust he would definitely have been on my list if it wasn't for Cutler so of course I want to see what but, Cutler can do before I'd be but I, I think down I wouldn't there be against, I wouldn't you know, be against he, it he's got potential to play and add some value my, my pick is on the team that's tanking this year. So you know they're going to be throwing. Yeah. And luckily he's a wide receiver. Okay, who's that? And he's probably the only wide receiver that's still you know, still, still relevant. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's Robbie Anderson at one six. Do, do you trust him? Are you are you comfortable? Because he's got I a few am, injury well, woes. Yeah. He's he's going to be the number one target with Quinty and Umar going down for the yeah that was bad know, luck for the year yeah he's clear number one yeah. and um, you, from everything you I've, won't find many of them down there yeah from everything true. and they're going to have to throw because they're going to situation you yeah know, they're going to be behind in an awful lot of games you're absolutely yeah. right yeah so. so. And he and he did prove he's a he's a big play guy. He has got a shoulder injury. Does that concern you at the moment? Or no, no, he's, he's he's back back as well. That's fine. So and, and, and catching good. balls. So oh well, then it was minor then a bruise if nothing else. Okay, well that is a good pick down there at one six one. Well, my next guy one six four one six four. Sorry, Even better. My next guy up on my list was one seven three. Is Rex Burke? I've got him as well. I couldn't avoid that value down there, and the reason is. As much as I believe in Mike Gillersley this year, you know what happens with Bill Belichick, and sometimes they ride the hot hand. And Rex Burkhead, I mean, Gillisley would be clearly my number one in terms of both running and catching, but I think Rex Burkhead's a pretty damn good two here, actually. I've got him on my list for that, for, for that reason and another reason. I actually read that Bill Belichick is a big fan of Rex Burkhead. I'm not surprised. I mean, the metrics tell you that. Um, he's a big fan of Gillisley as well, and he went out and got them. Yeah. And he got them on the cheap as well. It's very fancy. cheap, I yeah. Mean, I, I, I do think Rex Burkhead offers value down here for a lot of reasons, and, and it could just be... Because they do do this, he might just be that you hear like Mike Gillespie gets banged up and Rex Burke has been put in, and well, that's and we know going. James White and Dion Lewis are in the mix as well, yeah. but. But this you know, value, James White in PPR maybe, but he could be he's not going to be the first and second down runner. Seven three he could be my fifth running back off the board in a small league or even my sixth. I think that's great value down there. One seven three is any pick you like. Yeah, I love that down there, so I'm happy with that pick. And Especially if you if you've taken a flyer on Gillespie earlier. Yeah. yeah, and Rex Burkett is your man. I wouldn't yeah. mind reaching up even a little bit just to make sure you. Yeah, absolutely him. correct, and I agree with you totally. And there's a, a little bit of wriggle room with a player like this to reach up because they're so far down the charts. Most people aren't going to be looking that deep, so very useful. Okay, well, who's your next man? My next man is Jonathan Williams, one eight two. I did think about him. I went a slightly different route, but I totally get it. We've talked about him a lot, haven't we? On this, we know show. our value. But yeah, I mean, we, I mean, we, we're probably flogging a dead, dead horse here because we, we've talked about him a lot throughout the preseason, even before anyone but else. But it has been. proved to be great. Advice already and he yeah, clearly won. I mean, he we, won we talked about him before it was even needed to talk about who was the two yeah. we we worked out specifically that Jonathan Williams was the man to target and that would have brought you great dynasty value if you were the McCoy owner um, because he has proved to be true so, as we said back up for the Bills last two years eight touchdowns for Gillespie ten for uh, Carlos Williams. always a valuable role so um, I, I and, totally and, and that's you know if McCoy goes down that that's, that value is even better this player I've chosen because I totally understand that and that to me is a great pick my, my man is the next man up actually 183 one pick after your guy Deontay Foreman and I'm going on pre-season information here so it's all based on what I've seen yeah. I saw enough to think if they have any kind of controversy there, because Miller hasn't looked himself. I mean, we, we don't know whether that they, was a They've already said they're going to give him a lesser role, Miller. Yeah, we don't know if that was the quarterback. But we I do, think we do know we it's do, the quarterback. It was the, but we, they did say they're only going to give him, they're limiting him to about 200 touches. Because they think he's better doing it. Like yeah, that. assuming that's correct, and there's no reason to doubt what they're saying is to be probably quite accurate, that would give about 100 carries for Deontay Foreman as well, or maybe a little bit more. 
if he proves to be a better back when he comes in for relief work, he may end up stealing the job. And at 183, I think that's a great, great value sleeper. Reading the early training camp reports as well, they're all saying, they're all quietly excited about Foreman. I like it. It, He can find a hole and he accelerates through it. I mean, uh, up until now, we haven't really mentioned him at all on our podcast, but it just just strikes me. We've got a little, sometimes this is what happens. You see a bit of pre-season information. You've got to make a snap decision on whether you think it's valid. I can see there being maybe a role for him. I'm not getting like overly like, yeah, I'm pumping him up and he's going to do this. I'm more thinking in terms of if I was picking late and I've got to put, kind of put a pin in somebody and I need, I've need i got a running back, maybe I'm a little bit weak at running back, you could do a lot worse than picking a player like this here. That's how I'm thinking about it. Okay. Um, okay, my next pick is uh, 191. So we're getting really into the... Yeah, we're going up. And this is Devin Funches. Like that. Yeah. Um I don't like Benjamin um, for the Panthers. Um, yeah. Devin Funches is vir- virtually free. Um, he's been impressing in training camp for what I've been reading. He certainly outperformed Benjamin. Yeah. Um, and I just think, you know, he's not going to hurt your team if he doesn't function. But there is an upside there. He's definitely well, definitely the number two wide receiver. Just because Benjamin does well in pre-season, which he did the other night, he did a really good job, a couple of catches, a touchdown. We all know what happens with Benjamin. I want to see this regularly. And that's going to do it for a year. I, I, I don't want to see the first big hit from a decent corner and he, he fades out of the game. I mean, that will open the door for Funches, so it's a very solid pick there. Funches may be more used this year than we even any of us think at this point. That is a, I, think that's I a certainly point. would take a, a, a chance on him down there. Well, at, at 202, so we're going, for me, I'm going into the 200s now. I've, I've took, got him as well. I've took Kenny Golladay because I'm not, every chance I get to mention him, I'm going to mention him because, look, he's still ADP is really high. This could be my fifth wide receiver or six. You could do a lot worse. And I'm, I'll be honest, I mean, I'd rather own him than someone else have him. He might pay for your holiday, won't he? He might. He might pay for everything. He might pay for me holiday, holiday. He can do <laughs> anything, holiday. He, holiday in, you can stay he, there. He, he, he is a fabulous looking player. There's a lot of red zone likability about him. And I think at this value, he's really good. I think he's a good best ball player as well. He's, he's got an interesting upside. He's the kind of guy that you get the feeling just watching him. I get the feeling he can take over games, and that's what excites me. Let's face facts, he won't be 202 when the season starts. He's a playmaker. The hype train's already started. We were on it before it started, and that's the great thing. Always best to be on the train before it Yeah, and you can can check out our videos. We we give him a a big word months ago before the the train's out. I I took him in Dynasty in May. That tells you everything you need to know. So that was sneaky, sneaky. Have you got another player on there? Yes, I have. Who's your last player? 215, Dwayne Allen. Oh, is that now? Now, I think at 215, Dwayne Allen offers great value. Now, the reason is, at the moment, let's be honest, if I, if I took Dwayne Allen as my main tight end, we'd hardly be talking exciting. But it's a, it's a solid strategy because, you know, we're not a huge fan Especially of taking them early. you've drafted Gronk. But if you've got Gronk, this is sensible drafting. And if you don't own Gronk, but you can get the potential backup to Gronk, and I do use tight end, two tight ends a lot, there's some value in this guy because if Gronk goes down... They already know there's some red zone chemistry between him and Brady. So I, I think this adds a lot of excitement for any team. I, I like holding on to him. I have got him in one team this year already. and I, I just He's not a player I'm going to let go because I just want to kind of see the next first sort of six to eight weeks and see how it plays out. I'd rather have a second tight end and if I'm not going to use him, at least I've got him. I saw a betting firm the other day. Um, well, it's Sky Bet, I can tell you. I thought it was good value there too. Uh, they were going six to one and Gronk playing a full season. That's a fabulous value. He hasn't played a full season since 2012, maybe? His, his contract is incentivized enough that he has to play 90% of the game. So if we work that out logically, he can miss all but one of the bits. So if yeah, he, I mean, he only missed one or yeah, one if or he two could, games. If he could play 15 of those 16 games this year, he's going to give you tremendous value, um, and that's great. But I think Dwayne Allen, just in case anything goes wrong, is a lovely, lovely pick that late in the draft. He could do much worse at tight end. And let's be honest, if you waited on a tight end to target, that seemed like a really quite a sensible thing to do. It is something we're uh, a big fan of. Yeah. Okay, well, there are deep sleepers. Um, a good list. Again, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And, um, you know, if you please go and check back our rookie flyers and things like that, where we talked about Golladay months ago. Um, there's lots of good videos out there for you to watch lots of good content so uh, please consider subscribing thanks very much thank you